Hi, everybody. My name is Andreas Helmer, uh, and today I'm um, really excited to share with you about how I'm using Elastic to turn my diabetes into data diabetes and managing um, my condition uh, uh, with the Elastic stack. So uh, let's get started. So as I said, my name is Andreas, or most of my friends call me Dre like doctor, but not nearly as cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm from Ontario, Canada. Um, I'm, a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a total nerd and total geek. I love Kung Fu and Star Wars, but I'm also professionally um, a product owner for a, a global healthcare IT company. So I, I, I don't just work in healthcare, I live it every single day, when I, even when it comes to my, my personal life. Um, because I have type one diabetes. And it's, it's really, uh, it's, a, it's a condition that I'd love to share with the, the rest of you a little bit more about my, my story, what it is, and how I'm using Elastic to make my life a little bit better. So here goes. So a few years ago, um, more like 12 at this time, um, there was a there was a time when I was in university first year and I was getting really really thirsty like all the time. Um, I was I'd be sitting in class I'd be downing water jugs uh, like nonstop. I would I'd have to step out of class to go refill and to go and uh, use the the bathroom all the time. It was not fun. I felt like uh, one of those cartoon characters that you see all the time where they got shot full of bullet holes and water just kept coming out and out. So it, it wasn't really a really nice feeling. And I also was quite skinny. Um, my BMI was, I think if I remember correctly, under 19. Um, I was about 140 pounds and I'm six feet tall. So it's, it's pretty, I was skinny. And uh, even though I, I felt relatively okay, otherwise, um, for some reason I was just dropping weight all the time and it wasn't really um, healthy. So then one day on Wednesday, January 25th, I went and I saw my doctor. And I remember sitting in the waiting room and he called me in, he had me uh, uh, do a little test and I was pricking my finger and he came back and he told me that he was gonna send me to the ER because I most likely had something called diabetes. So I, I, I rushed out, um, well, I didn't rush, I was because I was kind of in a daze at that moment in time. Um, I remember sitting in my van and I called my mom and I told her like, hey, mom, uh, that, uh, that I'm being sent to the hospital because the doctor thinks I have something called type one diabetes. And she met me there and I know something about my mom. My mom has been a nurse for, 20 plus years. So she's, she dealt with patients under on dialysis, heart patients, um, uh, kidney failure, liver failure, all those kinds of things. So she's, she's seen uh, quite a bit. And so when I, when I met her at the hospital that day, it was, it wasn't a very nice face to walk into because I think she had much better of an idea of what this diagnosis meant than, than I did. Um, so it was, it was a little bit heartbreaking. Uh, to see that, but she put on a brave face and we sat there and uh, eventually the doctor came and gave me what was called uh, my very first shot of insulin. And then the next day, well, after they sent me home, they said, okay, you need to come back next day and we're going to teach you some things. So I came back the next day and uh, my mom came with me again um, and we sat in the waiting room at the education center and I got taught a whole bunch of things like it was it was insane um, about how to manage my diabetes and um, and what 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 it is and and stuff like that so they told me a lot of things including that the multiple different types so there's, there's type 1 diabetes which I'm diagnosed with which means that my pancreas essentially decided to stop doing what it's doing, or it's essentially a part of it, the beta cells in the pancreas decide to stop doing. This affects about 5% of all um, people diagnosed with diabetes. The most common type two diabetes um, 
is which affects over 95 percent of diabetic patients um, is really um, more of a lifestyle uh, disease. It, it can be triggered by uh, things like obesity, um, poor diet, uh, and just sedentary lifestyle, things like that. So it's it's not it's something that can be treated very well with um, exercise and diet in uh, actually probably most cases. Whereas type one diabetes is I have to take insulin. I have to inject myself every single day. So going back to me sitting at the diabetes education center, this was the little package essentially that they gave me. I got a, an insulin pen filled with two different types of insulin. Um, uh, they gave me blood uh, uh, sugar. Um, they gave me a, a, a lesson on how to car uh, calculate carbohydrates. They gave me a lot, a lot of information. And I had to track all this information because by little did I know that this data and all of this dosing and uh, calculating was going to be part of the rest of my life. I had a ton of data to track, which was, to be honest, quite overwhelming. But it wasn't, uh, wasn't that bad because for the next little while, I continued my life uh, as, as, a, as I needed to be. Um, I did everything. Uh, I, I moved out. I got uh, a dog, um, my first dog, Bowser. We uh, went uh, ATV riding, we did activity, hiking. I, I, I got a new love for camping. I got and crashed my first car. <laughs> and most importantly, I got engaged um, to, to my wife, which was, uh, which was really, really awesome. Um, so life was great. I, I, I gave myself insulin every day. I um, most of the time tracked my blood sugars and uh, what I was eating, and I was doing pretty well. Until about this date, uh, Sunday, August 11th, um, my wife and I, we went to the Kitchener Jazz Festival. It was fantastic. Like One of the bands she'd been um, looking forward to seeing for a long time was playing. And... Uh, we were rocking out in front of City Hall uh, downtown, and I told him I, I turned to my fiance at the time, and I said, I think I'm feeling low, or hypoglycemic. My hands started shaking a little bit, uh, and um, I, I felt like I need to go eat something. So, a little silly me, I forgot my sugar tablets <laughs> at home, because, yeah, I'm not perfect, um, but it happens. And I remember turning around and then all of a sudden it was nothing. Absolutely nothing. I blacked out. And to be honest, I tell you, even to this day, I still don't remember really what happened. I remember a lady um, reaching down to me to try and give me like a little a piece of gum or, or, or candy or something. And I I rudely told her off because it was a sugar-free piece of candy or gum. Um, I, I still feel pretty bad about that. But really, um, it's just bits and pieces. I remember paying for a Coke at the, at the pizza joint. And um, but that, that was really it. And then all of a sudden, I woke up. I was sitting in my wife's car. We were uh, nearly at the hospital. Um, she explained to me what had happened. And I was like, oh. Okay, cool. Um, I fell down and a month before my wedding. I had scratches all over my face a month before my wedding. And we were going to the hospital a month before my wedding. Great. <laughs> so it was a bit of a wake up call. Um, and I figured while sitting in the hospital um, doing a bunch of tests and they were hooking LEDs up all over, uh, not LEDs, uh, leads to me all over me. I, I figured, Maybe if I had more information with me, or maybe if I had more data, I might have been able to prevent this. So this is where my whole problem comes in. So in a normal, uh, in a normal day, like with conventional um, diabetes therapy, I prick my finger um, with a little uh, lancet, and then I measure my blood glucose. And we can, I can generate a graph kind of like this, where my normal range will range anywhere between four and 10 millimoles per liter. Um, 
and uh, I'm, this is Canadian standard. So if you want to uh, use what's typically used in the US or other parts of the world, just multiply these values by 18 and then you'll get uh, milligrams per deciliter. Um, so that this is the normal range, what I'm supposed to be in. And looking at this, this is probably a pretty good day. The problem is the big gaps in time. If I'm not measuring consistently, then I could have the potential to miss what's really going on in between. And I could have something like this happen because things like hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia can happen uh, within a matter of hours. Um, um, it's, they call it riding a roller coaster and it can really affect my overall health and my, my blood sugar. And I can miss these spikes and these spikes don't just have to go up, they can go down as well. Um, but in general, it's, it's a lack of data that I have in order to get all the information uh, that I need. And I'm guaranteed that one of you out there is thinking, oh, why don't you just test more often? Okay, sure, I could, but you try testing 147 times in a day and pricking your finger and then using a test strip, which costs about a dollar a piece. Um, and then dealing with all of that that many times. It hurts a lot uh, and it's not fun. And some people have to do it. And, and that's why um, a few years ago after this incident at the jazz festival, I started looking into something called a continuous glucose monitor, which, uh, which I'm wearing here right now. Um, and what this uh, device does is it does the 147 tests in a day for me which is about equivalent to every five minutes, which means I'm getting a lot more data and I have the chance to see, okay, when are those highs happening? And I can act on them and I can uh, surf the waves uh, as it's called, or, or ride the roller coaster a little bit more efficiently and smooth it out. Um, and this is, this is great. I'm getting a lot more data to go and, uh, and figure this out. And I can get a lot more accurate information about how I'm treating my body. And I'm uh, and therefore get a lot more accurate uh, readings. So that that's ultimately um, what was happened. And so after um, after the hospital visit, I found a, a local endocrinologist who is by far the greatest person that I've ever met. Um, she knows who who, who I'm talking about, and uh, the she really helped change my life. To be honest, because. Um, I got one of these devices. I, I healed up in time for my wedding. Um, I had no scars on my face, luckily, so we had good pictures. And uh, it, it turned out great because uh, she also hooked me up with something called an insulin pump, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, but so instead of having to take shots every um, time I needed to take insulin, I would just do um, a little setting on my, on my pump. But I'm getting a lot of data still even from that insulin pump too. And so this is where elastic comes in. Finally, sorry. <laughs> I know probably a lot of you are thinking, okay, this is a great story, but where does elastic come in? Well, here it is. Um, and using uh, elastic, I can take all of this information, combine it and really help give me a, a nice overview of, of my health uh, altogether. Now, before I continue, I really have to stress that the Elastic Stack is not a medical device. I work for a medical device software company, so I know what a medical device is. Elastic is not. What I'm doing here is 100% personal interest, and nothing that I say or do here should be considered medical advice by anyone. Even though I like to introduce myself as Dr. Dre, I'm not an MD, and you shouldn't completely ignore what I'm saying in terms of health information here. This is for my own personal fun and benefit. Um, always speak to your own doctor if you wanna make changes to your own health. Good, now that that public service announcement is out of the way, um, I can talk again about how I'm using Elastic. So I'm wearing this continuous glucose monitor. I have an insulin pump and I have a phone all in my pocket. And I'm combining these things and I'm uploading that data to a service called Night Scout, which is bullet number two. Um, Night Scout is a, is a really great uh, uh, piece of software that was made by um, 
uh, people with diabetes, just like me, who are tired of waiting for the medical device companies to catch up to the 20th century. So I, I encourage you to go look up what Night Scout is and, uh, and see what they're all about. But taking all this information from my insulin pump and I'm filtering it all through my home server where I've got Logstash installed. Logstash is taking that information and enhancing it with additional information from Google Fit or from my tile, which I have attached to uh, myself uh, all the time and getting uh, GPS information and uh, Google Fit, I'm getting exercise information, I'm getting step counts. All this information is being put together in a way that I can then display Elasticsearch and Kibana to see um, what's going on with my health. Oh, here's my workflow. <laughs> so it's, it's a very neat and hacked together workflow, but it works and it works for me. And that's why I like it because I got to use the Elastic Stack to do something really cool uh, and have it benefit me all at the same time, which I think is really what the software like this should really be uh, used for, is for, for uh, to be used in a way that benefits people um, and, uh, and really makes an impact on our lives. That's why I work for a healthcare company, because I, I believe that through software and through technology, we can make people's lives a little bit better. So that, that's my workflow. And ultimately, I end up with something like this. So here is my Kibana dashboard. And this is live, uh, what you're seeing here. And pardon me if I'm looking down at my monitor here. But um, I have uh, all of my blood glucose information being listed here. I have information about what kind of food I'm eating uh, listed below. And I have information in terms of how much, excuse me, how much insulin uh, I'm taking. So, and that's what these bars here are for. So I have all of that information in one graph. You, there, I have yet to find a um, piece of commercially available software that can do this um, without DIY work. Like as far as I know, no medical device company is, is doing all this information in one uh, place. But so this is all my info and I can manipulate the way I want it. And that's why I like Elasticsearch. I can show you exactly what my blood sugar is right now. It's at 7.9 or 143. Um, um, that should say milligrams per deciliter, but oops. Um, and it could, I can also use that information to calculate my average blood glucose over the last three months, which is called A1C. So that information is, is right here as well. And the cool thing is, is that this is actually pretty accurate. 6.3 is, is pretty close. I actually went to the lab yesterday um, to have my, my regular blood work done. And it was at 6.1. That's great. That, that's a really, really good number for, for somebody uh, who has type 1 diabetes. I think that's fantastic. And my, I know my doctor is going to be very happy with that too. Um, and I can see how often I'm in range between that 4 and 10 mark uh, that I mentioned. And I can see uh, how uh, often I'm in a high range and by time of day. And, all, and, and I can see what kind of food I'm eating and what's the biggest carb value. We had Chinese food the other day. So that's a really big Chinese box uh, right here. So it's, it's a really cool tool that I can use and go back and look at my last week and see, okay, I, it looks like I ate a lot of food here and I didn't take quite enough insulin for that. And then that caused me to go up and I can use that information to uh, make better decisions about my health. And, uh, uh, and even further, um, if it was working, I don't think it was working. No, darn. Um, I mentioned that I also have Google Fit uh, information being uh, displayed. And normally that displays down here, but I'm pretty sure I know what's broken. I think my token uh, expired on the Google API. So normally that shows up down here. So it is a little bit hacked together with all these different APIs uh, being crunched in, but um, I can get a lot of really cool information. And that's, that's really the main point of my, my presentation here today is, is that I can take various sources, combine them in one place and help them impact me. And I can take it one step further using Kibana. So I wrote a, a blog article about this project here a couple of years ago and about how I 
just inputted just my CGM information into Elasticsearch and I used the Elastic Machine Learning. So this was uh, right when machine learning was first introduced and I was at an Elastic Con in Toronto uh, after I had just taken the uh, Engineer One course and I, I approached the guys and said, hey, this is, this is cool, we can do this. And he was like, yeah, feed it in. So I did, and I did a prediction and it said, okay, on October 6, you should be at a 5.9. So I went and looked at my historical data and, and it actually said, yeah, on October 6, I was at 6.0. So it was really cool. It was really close and it was really accurate. So what that really told me is that either I'm really consistent with my blood glucose data or I'm really, consistently good or really consistently bad, or that machine learning is just pure magic. So I like to think it's the third option, but that's just me. So I, in terms of my project, because up to this point I've given this talk before, I'm taking it to, to a next step. Right now, my, my process is to combine all these different APIs and use Logstash to combine them into one. But what I really want is to have a single source of that information being sent up so that I don't have to piece these things together. So that's why I'm working on this app called, what I'm calling HealthBeat. I don't care if that I know I'm probably encroaching on a, on a few creative rights here, but I don't care. Uh, this, is, this is my little personal app that I'm writing. Um, it's my first full stack app and I, I am by no means a developer of any kind like that. So I'm gonna keep, uh, keep on uh, going. So really what I want this being able to do is to take this, uh, the glucose information and this, uh, the uh, information from my insulin pump, have, a, have an app on my phone that takes all of that, including more, because I have sleep information in there, I have step information, heartbeat information, all of that is stored inside the health app on my iPhone and push it up into um, Elasticsearch, my Elastic Cloud account directly, and then visualize it in Kibana. And I'm working on it and it's not the best, it, it kind of works. I, like I said, I'm not that big of a developer, but you know, let me pull my Mac over. I would show you the, the app on my phone, but I'm running a little short on time. So I just want to get through this. So as you can see, I have, yeah, I'm gonna go on my laptop here. I have communication with my Elastic cluster. Everyone knows this tagline. Um, when I run the app and you can see it's getting information from my Apple Watch, it's getting my heart rate information, it's all being dumped out. And uh, and on my app, on my phone right now, I've also got the steps being shown. So, so it, this is a work in progress, but it, it'll work for me. And I think it, it's, it's kind of cool. So really at the end of the day, uh, all I really want is to get more data and to put it all together so I can have better information to impact my own personal health. I wanna see it all in one place and I wanna see all of my health information in a way that I can manipulate so that I, I can analyze it and uh, help me make better decisions about my, my own personal life. So yeah, um, that's it. I wanna thank you everybody uh, for, for coming today to Elasticon and for listening to my talk. If you wanna reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, although I rarely use it so you might catch me on there you might not and i will be posting uh, the code and updates to um, my health beat app uh, on my github um, when it becomes available so um thanks everybody have a great day